Well, I forgot to, uh, I don't know, it wasn't recording. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it turned it off by itself or if I forgot to press record, but I've got to start this over, and I'm not going to print out another set because I already printed another one out. Here we go. 8.3, show that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So now we're going to be looking at the properties so we can determine whether or not it's a parallelogram. So I can use I um, use properties to identify parallelograms and then use them in real world problems. So I do apologize that this is all written out, but uh, I'll try to point things out again. So what congruence postulates show is that these two triangles are congruent. So we're looking at the triangle on the top and the triangle on the bottom. These two sides were marked congruent. So I added in the vertical angles. So the vertical angles would give us a side angle side. But we don't have to actually stop right there because if we know that this is a parallelogram, um, this is a transversal, this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to that angle. So we could have had like an angle angle side if you wanted. Um, you could definitely show similarity with angle angle, but we we're looking for congruency. All right, how about number two? If H is 62, and I also have this one marked, so where I'm showing that opposite sides are congruent, what's the measure of these two? Well, we can take this in two different ways. Remember, all three angles have to e sorry, all four angles have to equal 360. If you subtract 62 and 62, you get 236 degrees. And these two will be congruent, so divide by two, you get 118 degrees. Or you could say you have a parallel line here, one right here and one right there, cut by transversal, same side interior, they equal 180. So you can take 180 minus 62 and you get 118. So either way. Okay, this is where the fun begins, 8.7. So that's the diagram on the left, and then 8.8 .8 is the diagram on the right. So on the left, if opposite sides are congruent, then you have a parallelogram. And here, if opposite angles are congruent, you have a parallelogram. So these are your converses from the theorems we had for 8.3 and 8.4 in the last section. Okay? Let's look at an example. Shown as a part of a stairwell, the railing. Okay? How, explain how you know the support bars are parallel. Well, here opposite sides are congruent, and right here opposite sides are congruent. So opposite sides are congruent, so we know that those bars must be parallel. So I guess I could put in that little arrow if you want. Alrighty. I know I might be going fast because I'm not writing down the information, so you can always pause me. Again, 8.9 on the left, 8.10 on the right. So if only one pair of opposite sides are congruent and parallel. Okay, so just one set. You have a parallelogram. And in this one, if your diagonals are bisected, this is another converse here, then you have a parallelogram. Okay? I should look up to see which one that was. So, let's look at this. Suppose you place two straight narrow strips of paper of equal length on top of two lines of sheet paper. So, AB and CD. They are of equal length, so that's why I marked it right here. Explain, when you connect these two lines, explain why this is a parallelogram. Well, since AB is equal to CD, we know they're congruent. The lines of the notebook are also parallel, so AB is parallel to CD, and that's theorem 8.9, which we just did a period of one set, congruent and parallel, you have a parallelogram. Example three. Now, we want to use theorem 810 that says opposite side, sorry, the diagonals bisect each other. Well, I know that this set is bisected, but in order for this to be a parallelogram, these two have to be bisected, or at least this whole segment has to be bisected, meaning these two have to be equal to each other. So 8x minus 32 equals 4x. Subtract 8x on both sides negative 32 is equal to negative 4x, divide both sides by negative 4, x is 8. All right, last page. There's actually a lot on here, and yes, I had nothing written down because I didn't get this far when I noticed <laughs> that I did not record. I seem to do that a lot. Okay, so we need to show that this is a parallelogram. We can do this in one or two, uh, three ways. We can show slopes make opposite sides the same slope. 
um, that they're parallel. Parallel lines have the same slope. We can do distances, and we can also do midpoints of your diagonals. So let's get started. Let's start with slopes. Okay, so let's do the slope of fj. So to go from here to here, I have to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 over 1, 2, 3. And let's do the uh, slope of uh, GH. I should put a little M there. So I have to go down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 over 1, 2, 3. Yep. So far, so good. Now let's find the slope of FG. So I have to go down. 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Down 2 over 7. And then the, finally the slope of JH. I have to go down 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there we go. Opposite sides um, have the same slope. Okay. What if we do midpoints of the diagonals? Okay, so how about the midpoint of FH? So add your two x's. Negative 4 plus 6 over 2. And then the two y's. 5 plus negative 4 over 2. So we get 2 over 2, which is 1, and then 1 half. So that's the uh, midpoint of that one. So go over one up a half. It looks like it. But um, let's find the other one. Midpoint of JG. Okay, take the two x's, negative one plus three over two. And then the two y's, negative 2 plus 3 over 2. So you get 2 over 2, which is 1 and 1 half. Beautiful. Same midpoints. Okay, I think by now we know this is a parallelogram, but the last one, okay, this is the one that no one likes to do, but we do have a program that can take care of this for us. So distance. Remember the opposite sides have to be congruent. So let's find the distance of FG, okay? So FG, I'm going to take the difference of my x's, negative 4 minus 3 squared plus the difference of my y's, 5 minus 3. So you're going to have the square root of 49 plus 4. Okay, that looks like a 9 also. Be careful, 49 plus 4. So that would be 53. So now let's find the distance of JH. I better write a little smaller, huh? So take the differences of my x's, so negative 1 minus 6 quantity squared plus negative 2 minus 4 quantity squared. This will be negative 7 squared, you get 49. Um, uh oh, did I do something? Oh, minus a negative 4. Okay, so this will be positive 2 squared, which is plus 4, we get square root of 53. Um, I knew those had to be the same, so then it can help me check to see if I made an error. Okay, now let's do these two sides. Distance of FJ. Negative 4 minus a negative 1 squared plus 5 minus a negative 2 squared. So this is going to be a negative 3 squared, which is 9. And this is going to be 7 squared, which is 49. 9 plus 49 is 58. And last but not least, we're running out of space. Okay, distance of GH. The difference we have 3 minus 6 squared plus 3 
minus a negative 4 squared. 3 minus 6 is a 3 squared, you get 9. Negative negative is a positive, 3 plus 4 is 7 squared, you get 49. Yep, same thing. All right, so there's three different ways you can prove that this is a parallelogram. So, or, I mean, if you can get wild and crazy, pick one side, find the slopes and the distance, that would work also. That might actually be quicker. Oh, I don't know, the slope that's pretty, pretty quick. So uh, summary has all this fun stuff. I, I like these things. They really help me uh, visualize all the different properties. Uh, this is like good to put on a cheat sheet if you ever need it. There is our homework and our common core standard. Everyone have a nice evening. Stay warm.